I've always used, and I didn't know it existed. I had no idea. Some, maybe some of you know where it is, but I'd, I'd like to just walk that way and start our little walk from there. It's just down towards um, Prince's Gate, Palace Gate, sorry. Oh. So, Bishop, uh, it seems my grandma will call it Bishop's Palace Gate. shop was pretty much where the you know where the bus station is and there's um, there's a kind of concourse at the front at the lower end of it there's a, there's a car park and there, there used to actually, funny enough I used to be a bus driver during my holidays before I was an art student and there were some mini bus offices at the, at the kind of foot of the bus station and that's where his shop was pretty much and my uncle who's just to right was saying yesterday he could remember seeing uh, seeing those buildings and they were two to three story buildings in Paris yeah. Street and most of them had gardens that would run towards, were well, they coach houses or workshops at the back? Yes. But, but he, he had, to, he had his, his was in, entirely a workshop. It, it, two workshops. Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd always imagined um, that, that that's where all the work took place. But obviously, and through listening to, through, through hearing Grandma talk that day, I'm addressing all this to my uncle here to get some, get some verification. <laughs> um, that uh, actually, a, this, this was the site where they would do a lot of their work. And I, I imagine, but it's another thing that's of consideration is there's a difference between stonemasons and stone carvers. And in fact, my grandmother was just saying, we just had Sunday lunch with her, and she was just saying she had this moment as a kid of saying to someone, uh, some, a friend's mother, I think, saying, uh, oh, my dad's a stone carver. And this lady saying, uh, well, actually, my husband's a stonemason. Without, without the stonemasons, you'll still father would be nothing and there's this real there's this real tension you know and you can pick up a little bit I think when Nick's talking that there are st some carvers that are masons there are masons that are carvers there are masons and there are carvers and so at some extent there is at some point there's a kind of extreme where they keep see themselves as very 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 separate but I, um, there's, there's some discussion as well that my, my grandmother starts to remember seeing her father up wooden scaffolding and then you know you realize actually that Wooden scaffolding could only be self-supporting, I suppose, to a certain height. You know, it's not the kind of scaffolding that we have now. So, so, so uh, for example, a stone carver couldn't work in, you know, couldn't work in situ, if you like, above a certain height. Um, things would have to be lowered, I, I imagine, or kind of you know, put in place afterwards by a, by a stonemason. But all, ordinarily, in some of the some of the cases, uh, from what I understand, in talking to Nick and my grandmother, they would cut a piece of stone put it in situ, put it in place, and then the, the carver would come and work it and work their detail into it. And then, so there's a, there's a, there seems to be a kind of bureaucratic layer. There's the, there's the plan of the whole works, where, the, where they know where the stone is going to go and the types of stone, they know where it's going to go. And then there's a level of detail, which is a kind of craftsperson, hand, you know, handicraft, if you like, adding that layer of detail in. And it's, it would appear, from what we're going to see, that actually there's very little control over what that final layer of detail might be in terms of the kind of architects or plan planners design for what this cathedral is. That there, there is the poetic license, so to speak, at that, at that point, and that the stone carver can put in whatever they like. So let's walk back, I'll take you back to the West Front.